to uh, another episode here of Carbonite Bounty BS with uh, us nerds here. Um, this will be basically our final review of season one. We'll go through episodes, I believe, what, 13 to uh, 22. So we'll be finishing off all of season one here of the uh, Clone Wars cartoon, as well as going over, you know, as we do with Carbonite Bounty BS, just different BS topics on Star Wars, you know, all things Star Wars. Uh, mostly pertaining to obviously this episode and these these episodes, but um, without a further ado, um, we'll give it to DP and I'll let you know where to find us at. Nerdstalkopedia.com, people. Make sure that you're going to our website where you get all our links to your um to our different outlets and platforms that we are on social media. Um, at Nerdstalkopedia, we are on Twitter, Instagram, and also on Facebook at Nerdstalkopedia, of course. Make sure that you are subscribing to us on YouTube if you're watching the channel right now, or you should be watching the channel right now. Um, make sure you click that notification so whenever you, we're on, you know that we're on. Also, make sure that um, you are emailing us your feedback. We love getting your feedback at nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. If you're on Facebook, we have a Facebook group that you can join called Carbonite Bounty BS, a Star Wars um Star Wars group, okay? So make sure you search for that and jump, you know, come and join. We have some really good conversations and stuff. Um, and also make sure that you guys are subscribing to our podcast on all your favorite platforms, such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, we are there. Appreciate it, guys. And like I said, without a further ado here, we'll jump right into things. Uh, as far as news-related topics this week, uh, nothing really much to uh, discuss on the Thank Star Wars front. Um, uh, I don't know, right? Okay. You know, not, not too much going on. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, projects, I guess, across the uh, Disney, um, you know, theme parks are still full steam ahead. Um, you know, as far as Disney press releases, um, subscribers are up with Disney Plus, which is obviously good for the content we want to create in in good for star wars um and i believe disney plus is opening in a couple more countries which will in turn increase views so good 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 for star wars i mean those are more shows um as far as we know now everything production dates are on uh, time so all the shows that they've discussed on the press releases and the ipo uh seem to be on time um and i know obviously the big one is obi-wan coming up so uh We'll keep our ears peeled uh, throughout the week, and if there's anything else, uh, we'll look to go live or add that to, as DP said, our streaming platforms to keep you guys involved. And also, you know, another thing is if you guys see anything um, click, you know, clickbait worthy or any newsworthy, please post on our platforms. We love to interact with you guys. So anything that you guys see on there, shout, shout out to us. We'll review it, and um, it could be something we can discuss on the show here. Um, yeah, don't forget to mention too. Um, I mean, if anybody didn't know, you said it off mic, uh, Mitch, that um, that that because of Gina Carano's situation, they're no longer doing this. Um, the the Republic show, right? Uh, yeah. So it's uh, Rangers Republic was based on um, whatever you know, Marshall Dune. She was one of the main characters in that. So uh, that's something that they are maybe recast. But as of now, it looks like that is something that is no longer going to be um, one of the releases. Um, so, you know, there's a lot going on right now. Um, it's, it's all kind of loose as far as with Lucas films, with Disney. Um, but yeah, they, the range of the Republic series is, is in major, major doubt now. They, they got enough. <laughs> they, they got there's enough to keep everybody's fans, you know, all the fans interested. So, you know, go, go Lucas film. Yeah, there's a lot. So yeah, excited with that. But uh, yeah, guys, just diving into this and, uh, you know, once again, thank everybody here for joining us on Valentine's Day on our stream. Um, spending your Valentine's Day evening with us, hopefully. So, um, you know, How do you do it? Right, however you do the hard. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. All right. Yeah. Hey, no one likes the idea about the, the love the, the <laughs> love aspects in Star Wars. You know, it's like, a bunch of it, yes. I mean. Yeah. There's know. a lot of love in Star Wars. And, and she can handle this um um lightsaber off for absolutely like you know he's really into this you know anyway <laughs> right. yeah i mean you have weird love you have luke and leia you have you know and then you have han and chewy i mean you got like weird love you got you know so you guys didn't want to talk about that but that's all right well all right. you know i guess i guess that's an interesting sidebar it was a week before last topic but uh since we're talking about love and this is Valentine's Day, um, there was an official press release from George Lucas, actually, that uh, 
High Republic days, and even I guess during this current time, which is the New Republic era, um, the or pre New Republic era, I guess. So this will be what the what will we consider this timeline in the Star Wars where, lore? Where are you I mean, this is relationship to to the Battle of Yavin. Okay. Like how? Where? I mean, where are you so, thinking? It's sixty years be- yeah, beyond. Maybe sixty, 60 years yeah. before or after. Years. Yeah, At, before. After. After. after after no it'll yeah. be before you're right yeah this before, is before so, so if it's before the prequels oh, so like 30 okay. years before the prequels you mean like or 20 years before the pre- yes I, we probably call that decline of the republic maybe like that okay. so we'll, yeah. we'll do that the, the republic's decline because yeah. the end of the republic obviously is the stuff we're talking to talk about here the clone wars and palpatine's right. takeover um so i would say the f- decline the Empire, of the yeah. power and the prestige of the republic over the last what 50 years that's what yeah decline yeah yeah, but uh, Lucas has officially announced that his view on the Jedi were the Jedi were allowed to love and have um, intercourse, but ah, the thing, the thing okay. that he were the thing that were forbidden from Jedi and what he worried about with Jedi were the attachment. So that was the big thing about the Jedi era that we didn't read about was they didn't want the attachment because obviously we seen and we'll learn with Anakin what happens uh, when that attachment. Yeah. Um, you know, goes wrong or it's too strong. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting news that he's coming out. It's pretty nice that he's still interacting with people, um, still doing interviews. It's it's a great bit to read. You know, every time you get a snippet of something he says or you know, Thomas it's, said, it's, the High Republic is hundred years before the prequel. Okay. Wow. So a hundred years on, yeah. So even then, back then, that they were um, still allowed. So yeah, based on where they're saying the High Republic ages. Even at current time. So I guess our the factors of Jedi not being in relationships was debuffed, the myth that everybody thought of. So, you know, that's that's good to hear Luke Lucas uh, dropping, you know, just information on things that he thought that didn't come across over this all this time, you know, and that'll tie in to what we're saying now and even stories that we learn, you know, later on as we do, you know, further shows. So, you know, appreciate that as well, Thomas is somebody interacting in the chat with us. So, you know, once again, guys, um, Last bit of news there, but uh, we'll just start it off here with the episodes kind of review. What we'll do today is we're going to go over basically everybody's favorite points. I mean, hopefully you guys got to catch up with the rest of season one with us. And um, we'll basically dive into everybody's kind of favorite points of it and and, and go from there. So we'll start with you, DP. Uh, what did you think or what were your favorite points of the uh, you know second half of the season? So I thought um... – um, the it was it was a few you know decent points. I mean, it was an episode stretch of like what ten or eleven that we we just shot through you know in a week. So a lot of it was um I, I wouldn't say a lot of it was a blur, but it was some you know good stuff you know in there. I especially like Trespass, the winter, the 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 um like Alaskan like you know type episode where the animation on that was like really good to me. Um the the way that you know they were in their snowsuits and. You know, um, the um, the Chai Cho, the 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 um, Chairman Chai Cho. You know, I, I love his attitude and his ruthlessness, and you know, he was just considering like um, like you know, sentient races and everything, and was calling them like trespassers and animals and everything. And you know, the the politics on that particular episode was was pretty interesting for that. Um, so I like the you know that particular episode. I loved um, the episode. Me and uh, Kim, we, we, you know, we were talking off mic about the um, the planet where the the uh, what I, what I want to call you. You were calling them like Irish. <laughs> yeah. you, you you were saying that oh they they they, they, they yeah. sound like Irish. <laughs> oh yeah, the lemurs. <laughs> the lemurs, yeah, the lemurs, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Irish, of course. Yeah, the 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 head guy, you know, he the head shaman or whatever. He was super hard headed and real stuck in his ways on not really, you know, um, um, being violent or, you know, um, um, not defending themselves and everything that they were just, you know, just going to just exist peacefully and whatever war was going to come, it was just going to come. But the um, inhabitants wanted they wanted to defend themselves. And I thought it was really cold how, you know, the. um, Count Dooku's people or whatever chose that planet to experiment. They would literally experiment with their baby Death Star, and it was just like, wow, you know, <laughs> it, just just like a whole planet and everything, and these are just peaceful people. I mean, 
I, it really harkens to how things are nowadays and, you know, how, how just cold people are out there not really caring about the lives of other people. You know, that's one thing I'm learning about Star Wars in particular. They take a lot of life lessons. And it's, and I think Lucas wanted to talk about a lot because, you know, he still has a lot to do with this series. He wants to talk a lot about um, how political factions affect different people and affect and how their lives affect the um um just the you know average layman the average average person and how their decisions just you know just can decimate like you know either a whole galaxy or whatever or just a whole tribe of folks so i like that particular episode and then um i did like the last the final episode i, I sort of like that little um you know, um, that little um, thing. And we could talk about that a little bit more as we go into like the finale. But I, I like those. That, that was my three points for um, these these past 10 episodes, 11 episodes. What about you, Hitch? You know, for me, I like the lemur episode a lot because the idea that they're like, well, fight for, fight for your freedom. No. OK, well, run for your freedom. No. OK, well, stand by while we fight for your freedom. Oh, that's fishy. You know, it's just like this weird sort of inaction thing from those guys. And it went, to my opinion, beyond pacifism because it wasn't like they were, like they stopped there. You know what I mean? They wouldn't even run away just to hide. Uh, I thought that those those were interesting because it really showed you the depths of the depravity of the separatists. And we're getting a nice differentiation now between the separatists and what the republic's willing to do, which I like. I thought that mm -hmm. the real gem of this was definitely the um, the Ryloth, the the Twi'leks, the Twi'leks. I like that piece a lot. I liked the clones making um, making friends with the little girl. I thought that was a really poignant piece. That was a really good episode. Yeah, yes. I really really liked that <laughs> a lot. I thought that was really cool, and I did like the bounty hunter intrusion into the uh, into the Senate, which was. Uh, which man, the plot of that, we'll, we'll have to talk about that in detail, but that one hit home for me here in February, 2021. That was the final episode, right? Yeah. Yeah. The one with the, where they came in and, and kidnapped the mm -hmm. senators and it was a hold my sword type of moment. So very interesting there. Mm -hmm. I wonder what's going on mm -hmm. behind the scenes. <laughs> um, I also thought it was so interesting. We, you know, we're, we're recording this during the pandemic lockdown. Talk about the blue shadow virus too. this virus that would escape from uh from the bunker on naboo and basically wipe out life in the galaxy because it's an aerosol and you'd have to i mean everybody knows how hard it is to get rid of an aerosol virus now we are all well yeah. aware of it yeah so those were my my big highlights for this uh section three i liked them a lot what about you ken yeah i uh i second that uh i really liked i it was i thought man Maybe they just wrote these episodes now. I mean, and <laughs> put them out. But no, these were done ten years ago, twelve years yeah. ago, ever. But that was a that I I really liked the virus uh, uh, episodes. Uh, I liked the doctor that was releasing it. I mean, he was like legitimately maniacal and <laughs> yeah, completely crazy. Really good character. Um, I enjoyed the lemur also. And the the, uh, the some of the accents. I don't know why a lemur would sound Irish or I guess it's Irish. <laughs> I don't know where they were going with that, uh, but I enjoyed the idea and it really showed the um, the the sort of the tenacity of those people. Right? They just they just didn't they weren't going to fight. They weren't going to fight the battle droids. They listened to their leader for the most part. They eventually at the end they came around. They're like, no, we got to we got to defend ourselves or else we're going to be mowed over. But I like the fact that they were pretty true to their species and the way they had been living for however many hundreds of years. Um, and I also liked George Decay as <laughs> Jurd, who is coming down to basically test this weapon on these defense. He's like, we need this weapon will destroy all life, but protect the machines. <laughs> oh, what is what is let's test it here. Perfect. I was like, great. And George Decay is so perfect the way he speaks and every I I mean I legitimately like the guy and I thought man I hope they succeed and destroy all these lemur because that's, that's the way it should go. But it really showed how this I mean there's all these really bad people out there both on the you know in the separatist side and 
I mean, and we're getting introduced to all these interesting characters that we see in Attack of the Clones, and they all disappear. Like, and then they all the Jedi get destroyed in Revenge of the Sith. So we're seeing all this great, all these great characters, these Jedi. Alea Sekula was very big in this one, uh, in this in this season, the end of this season. And then I really enjoy how we're getting, we're seeing Anakin turn bad. We're seeing the transition. Whereas I felt in Attack of the Clones, we had happy Anakin, you know, Kendall Anakin. And then in Revenge of the Sith, bam, we had like evil Anakin. I like to say like Chucky because he was completely just torn apart inside and, and evil. So I think that for me, the Clone Wars, is, this, the series is filling in all those character development blanks that I kind of missed in the in the main in the main movies that's that's my take well we did get like a a a kind of a genocidal thing in um with anakin and um uh attack of the clones (laughs) just a little little bit it's funny to think like we must have because that movie remember we talked about that movie came out like nine months after 9 11 so we all must have just been like well that's just what happens and and moved on (laughs) that's normal it's It's completely normal it's a normal thing yeah, you know, as far as my opinion as well, I'm on there with Ken and you guys as well. I mean, my, my favorite highlight of the series was uh, the development of Anakin. Um, the finale was phenomenal, as we'll get into, uh, but it's really development of Anakin. I mean, I, this series, the way it's laid out, is almost like, uh, you know, like a movie, like a 2.5. You know, it's not two, it's not three. It's like that perfect blend that everybody wanted to have. So, you know, that, that's my favorite part is just how they're meshing these characters that you see on screen but like i said for the casual viewer you have no idea who they are so the the fact that they spend a little bit of time in putting these you know characters giving them screen time giving them you know a name in in this all of a matter of what 22 minutes roughly an episode outside of the two parters of the finale i mean just the fact that you can introduce characters in and out kind of that fast as we alluded to so many times it's it's just great to see you know it just makes you wonder sometimes you know if you know, the writing can be a little better or, you know, I, I've never been really in a full movie production, but, uh, you know, it's just, it's crazy how they can, and, it, and like I said, it's Filoni, it's, it's not just him, it's it's all of them, his whole writing team, uh, all of LucasArts, I mean, they're just doing a phenomenal job of kind of coming up with creative ways, and now you're seeing it, I mean, and, and we'll get into this, this is a little sidebar, but I mean, the way the movie industry is now changing, based on what The Mandalorian has done, I mean, I think there will be any golden age of storytelling, honestly. With this Star Wars series coming out, I think all this stuff that they've done has laid the groundwork for a whole new era of storytelling. Well, I think that um, when you have these, these this big of a universe, there's a lot of stories to tell, and this type of format, is a week-to-week thing, is one of the better ways to tell the stories. Whereas, uh, I believe I said in a, another previous podcast, a movie, you have to literally wait a couple years right. for the next episode to come out. So when Ken's talking about that start um, um, thing going from Attack of the Clones or Revenge of the Sip, all of a sudden, you know, Anakin is like this. I mean, this is filling in the gaps there where you get a lot of character development. Um, the movies really can't can't do that because you have to, you know, um, do all the development in a two hour format. And the, the story is still stretched out. I mean, Star Wars is not just one two hour movie and then that's it. You know, it was um, the movies, not including the series and everything, was still you know, spread out over like nine episodes, nine movie episodes. And they still couldn't even, you know, and they still had to use the the cart, the, the animated series to, to expand the characters and stuff. So um, it's, a, it's a lot of meat. It's a lot of meat on the bone, which is what I'm finding out as a casual viewer to this series. It's a lot of meat on the bone there, you know, um, when watching this. Yeah, and it's a real easy, it's a real easy uh, format for people to get into this week to week, uh, week to week thing. And I like that Disney is not doing the net, you know, what uh, uh, Netflix does or yeah. other, I, you know, them. yeah, just dropping it because part of this week to week, like the old serials, like the cliffhangers, is the anticipation. Yeah. Of, oh, what what's coming next? Oh, I don't know. Oh, you know, I can't wait. That's that's a great thing. That's a great yeah. thing. And, 
and the movies, the Star Wars, the movies had that too. I mean, mm -hmm. we had two and a half, some three years in some cases between these movies. It made you, it made you hungry. And then it also, but it, I think it also, people drifted away too because it was too much time. But yeah. this is the perfect, it's the perfect platform. It's the perfect formula to get this entertainment to us. Um, and it's, it's just a whole new, it's a whole new world. So if, if you got to thank uh, the virus for something, <laughs> then <laughs> the, the, the virus blue virus, yeah. <laughs> for, yeah, blue virus for, for this, for giving us this platform, this energy in this platform yeah. to, to, uh, you know, that we're all enjoying right now. So yeah, about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've been saying, uh, <laughs> That this is an opportunity to change the way they tell stories by maybe intercutting different things and having things in different series go off at different times, even in different timelines, just because of the uh, release mechanism they have at their disposal. They have total control of the release of all these shows that they can synchronize. It's something they never had before. And what's so interesting is, you know, Star Wars was conceived as this, this pastiche of serials. And what were they? They were B-roll that they ran before the real movies. These were just, you know, Saturday morning cartoons for the most part. And Star Wars was a joke mm -hmm. because it became this monumental mega hit where it made $800 million unadjusted for inflation in 1977, which is, which is so mind boggling when you actually think about how much money that is. Uh, and, and, you know, it became this mega event where it wasn't just something that was on in the background. It was every three years, like, like you said, Ken, where it was, you know, uh, a lot of anticipation and a lot of angst went into these because episode two was going to come out and who knew the quality, who knew what was going to be in it, who knew what the story was going to be. And so the next chance you were going to get, the next crack we got at that story was three years later. And now, look, if there's a bad episode of one of these shows, whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. There's another one coming. There's another yeah. one. Coming. Yeah. Um, and essentially, I mean, you don't, you can skip, you could skip over, you know, if you were going back through these, um, watching them over again, rewatching them or whatever, it's episodes that you would definitely skip over. Um, because it's, you don't have to get the whole 22 episode full season to get the gist of everything that's going on with, but appreciating the fact that you are seeing the development of Anakin going to the dark side and they do, they do little tidbits and pieces with his personality. You know, with the way he talks to, um, you know, Obi-Wan and everything, the way he treats, um, you know, Ahsoka and stuff and the way Ahsoka, you know, um, um, shoots back at him and everything, you know, when he gets out of line and stuff. So you, you see the developments of that. And I'm the, I mean, the way I'm hearing that these aren't even the best episodes. So we, yeah. we got like a, um, some some really good stuff coming up, according to, you know, um, people I talk to on social media and stuff. And, you know, you probably you know, know this, too, Mitch. Um, but. It's really good. It, it, I, I did like a, a lot of the, the work that they put into developing a lot of the side characters instead of um, just relying on Anakin and Obi Wan. And I we 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 really didn't even see a lot of Grievous these pad this back half of the season, right? Yeah, we yeah he ran away somewhere. He yeah, throwing <laughs> starships, and he you know, they just rode him out for a little bit. But uh, they they developed more with with what Dooku had in mind and how he was manipulating the trade federation and mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, I think with the, uh, the banking, uh, the banking, uh, uh, leader was the, the droid, the robot. Fool. He you was, you should in have there. left when you uh, have the yeah. chance. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, they, yeah, sorry. <laughs> they developed some more of those characters too, but yeah, Grievous was like out of there. He was just gone. Maybe, uh, him and, him and uh, Dooku had a falling out or something. <laughs> wow. Um, so one thing I did want to mention, the episode that um, Hitch was talking about where the little girl and the two clones were, um, yeah, they, they were like, you know, getting acclimated with her and stuff. I thought that was a real good bottle type of, you know, way of, um, um, you know, using the clones and their personalities. And that little girl was just sort of taken to them. And at the end of the episode, she was just like, you know, I'm high by her. No, no, she was saying like brother, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, calling yeah. them brothers and everything. Yep. So that that was that was a is little episodes like that or make you appreciate, you know, um the development for, you know, the these this this type of series. 
So I thought that was decent. Yeah, it's uh, probably easier with a with a cartoon <laughs> the characters to, to to interact with each other. Right. Mm -hmm. Be I mean you get the you get the relationship. Yeah. So with yeah. people you've got to direct them. With cartoons you don't have to direct them. You just have to you just have to write them. And yeah, give them lines. Yeah. Give them lines. You give draw. Them lines. Them lines. <laughs> That's it. And you rely a little bit on the artist that does the voice, but a lot of it is a lot of it is already done within the the vehicle that the thing's written on. So you get yeah. those, and those, just make sure that you got a solid story. You know, solid, you know? right, right, right. Well, hi, Star Wars is solid. There's hey, nothing, I mean, I have no argument against that. Okay, <laughs> it's some of the best. It's some of the best story writing ever. You know, I mean, it's just it just it just great. Yeah, it, it has a lot of complexity. You know, for it to be what, you, what Lucas calls, you know, a children's product and everything, you know, because you still he still he still likes to cater to like, you know, the kids with with a lot of his stuff. But I think he's trying to he does a lot of teaching, which is which is really is which is really good. So um, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's basic. It's basic stuff. It's basic. Mm -hmm. Like it's good things for a parent to sh let let their child see because it's mm -hmm. just good stuff. Like, don't. Don't don't do bad things to people, you know. Treat yeah. people with respect. You, you treat them, treat people with respect. Tell the truth. People treat people with, with respect, and you know, um, yeah, you know, it, it's the good basic, you know, good stuff. If you can, well, if you're a hardcore Star Wars fan and everything, you should be teaching your, you know, kids a lot of, you know, a lot about this stuff. Um, to talk about a little bit about this last episode, though, I thought the pace of it was really decent, um, and it just sort of Oh, brought it home a little bit with them kidnapping the senators and stuff. I'm sitting up here thinking about like the Capitol riots and stuff. What could have happened, you know, <laughs> had they <laughs> had they really got control and you know took over the Capitol and everything. I'm like, oh wow, um, this sort of sort of brought it home a bit with. And it, it, it it's funny it was the last episode because it sort of paced it to where the it, it was real dramatic. You know, Anakin was. You know, going through like the the um you know through the place the the to uh, without his lightsaber because at the beginning of the episode he gave you know Padme the lightsaber and stuff. I mean, I thought that was a little weird, but he's really into Padme, so you know I thought you know <laughs> so he decided to, but it was a plot device to 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 bring it back at the end so he can actually have it to escape. Um, good episode. Yeah, I thought the same as well. Um, it's kind of funny you said that he gave the lightsaber to Padme. It kind of reminded me of back in, remember high school when, you know, Friday and football team, your girlfriend <laughs> would wear your UT to cheerleaders yeah, wearing jersey, yeah. and like, you know, the starting quarterback. So I, I don't know if they were going for that kind of like, feel there as far as like. More like a class ring. Than yeah, you know, or, you know, <laughs> yeah. you'd have, you know, you would see the girls with the varsity jacket on, like, you know, the yeah. football players and stuff. So it kind of, I don't know if he was going for that kind of like. Mm -hmm. teenage kind of high school feel but you know I, I definitely appreciate that and like like you said dp the pacing was phenomenal um cliffhanger -ish, but it, it's just wild how we're talking about 12 years ago that this stuff is happening and yeah yeah, yeah you know yeah. we're looking at it now and it's just like you know it like it could have been like yesterday right? yeah this, this would have come out and i'd have been like the capital come on come on let's get realistic no it would never happen <laughs> and now i'm watching this and i'm like oh man they might like they always, did you guys notice that they always kill the three eye guy? Like it seems like the three eyed alien gets it at every single one. Like he's the red, they're the red shirt. If you ever see the Malastare, right there from, from Malastare, you ever see the Malastarians, you know someone's about to get shot in the back. It's always the three eyed guy, like the alien. You mean like just some alien, random alien? Well, like if there's a group of hostages it. and there's someone from Malastare in that group, they're the one that's gonna get shot every <laughs> single time now in Star. That that's their whole thing now. Because that happened with Jar, because mm. Jar Jar Binks, you know, and this is one thing about these back episodes that I don't, you know, if if Jar Jar Binks shows up in an episode, you can skip it, for the most part, it's probably <laughs> not that great. Uh, you know, Jar Jar's got a body count here. I I, I think it's important, like clones, <laughs> senators, people from Malastare, aliens. You know, they're just dying, and it's all Jar Jar Binks' fault. And I and I think when we're done, <laughs> you know, Jar Jar Binks is a mendacious member of the like the House. Uh, and he's attached to this 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 mendacious and you know uh, this this totalitarian like he's attached to Palpatine because they're from the same place they're from like exactly they're like from they're creatures of the same uh, same origin 
And it's so interesting to watch him ruin everything over and over and over and over and over again <laughs> to the point where I'm just rooting against Jar Jar Binks every time I see him on screen. You're, you're empowering him <laughs> by, with your hate. <laughs> him. So the best thing that you could do, Hitch, is just ignore him. I really <laughs> I want to. You're just, let's not be, let's be clear. Me. There's nothing I would like more than to forget there ever was a Jar Jar Binks, but for some reason Disney and he, he, he just he just keeps showing up. I mean, you know that's 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 what this he does. Is but um, is having Jar Jar Binks mm-hmm. in Star Wars and and having them can, and continue to rack up a body count and continue to do these and these things where it's like and I love that the clones are pretty much like I don't want to be around that. <laughs> like, no way. He has a tendency of getting all of us killed. I don't think I want to help him though. I like that they're sort of getting wise to some of this stuff. Um, I, I like that. I the whole bounty hunter plot in the Capitol is so interesting because why wasn't there, yeah. you know, all the Jedi? Why weren't the Jedi on call? Why wasn't there right. a military response? Right. What was Palpatine right. doing? Well, was it, where was the Capitol police? Yeah, what did I mean? You know, did they, they were not distra- know? They were distracted. What did Palpatine mm. know, and when did he know it? That's the question we're going to have to ask ourselves. Unfortunately, it seems the galaxy may not get a chance to ask this question before. Order 66 goes out. So we'll see what happens next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all the senators were like, okay, well, what's going on? And, you know, um, you know, Padme, how do you have a lightsaber? What are you doing with yeah. that thing? You know, um, she's like, uh, uh. <laughs> it, it, you know. There was a lot of confusion at the end there about what was really <laughs> going on. Yeah. You think maybe yeah. that's a, yeah. that's a yeah. sitcom trope? It's like, why is there a lightsaber in your bedroom? Oh, I don't <laughs> A lot of, lot of, yeah, a lot of uh, inferring things, right? right? Yeah. So, but that makes it makes you more anxious for season right. two, to yeah, maybe, yeah. tie up these things. So we we're gonna say, well, that's why. And there'll be some, there'll be some answers. So it'd be, it's like the the cliffhangers, cliffhanger, the way it ended, it really, really left you like what? Because they were through the whole season, they were tying things up pretty, pretty carefully each yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, now it's there's there's well there's your big inner you know your big um, anticipation for the next season. Yeah, yeah, it ended off with a bang. I thought it was weird. I mean, just at being in a cartoon is, I mean, not so much spoilers. We were talking about the um you know the love thing at the beginning, um how um Anakin kissed, you know Padme, you know at the beginning, um we didn't really see a lot of the relationship with them two throughout this first season. Um, you know, they, they, they didn't really interact a whole bunch in person, you know, um, I mean, Anakin was off on adventures for the most part, you know, Padme, she was off on her adventures, um, until this final episode where, you know, he, they both go in and, you know, are like smooching and stuff. And, um, it was, it was interesting to see in a cartoon, um, that level of romance or whatever, you know. Um, but just further along, you know, the fact of, you know, these two are, you know, together, you know, um, and it'll be interesting to see how that develops, you know, for the rest of this series. Yeah, seriously. This is the first time I've ever well, seen Anakin and... and Padme and been like, I get it. Like, I get that. I get that. <laughs> like, I can understand it. You yeah, can see why he likes her and why she yeah, likes him. Finally, not... I get it. I'm like, okay, this isn't just because they were cast. So, in so, these so are, are <laughs> so, so are you saying when you saw Revenge of the Sith or just basically these first, you know, prequels, you were like, what is the attraction with these two well, together? It's you like know? I I do believe that they've so they have children, right? We know they do it. Like that's that's in the Star Wars canon because <laughs> they have children. So what I'm telling you is that when 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 Padme told Anakin, you know, I'm pregnant, and when she put, puts his hand on her on her belly, Anakin sort of seems like, how did this happen? Like, you know what I mean? He's sort of like, <laughs> and I'm, and I'm, and I'm kind of like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, not, I'm like, <laughs> like, like, Anakin well, pulled this off. Like, this is the thing. Like, Anakin pulled it. We know factually, canonically, that Anakin, Anakin... <laughs> Anakin, Anakin closed, right? He, we know this for a fact. So I, I, what I'm yeah, saying he, is that from what I've seen, certainly in episode one, I didn't see that. I didn't see that happen. Episode <laughs> no, two, oh, not at all. Not really. Uh, yeah. You know, maybe after he commits that, he commits yeah, that genocide yeah, yeah. and then um, confides in her, cementing their relationship as this terrible, 
you know, uh, you know, almost mafioso. Ah. Everybody's going to keep hush hush about what the war hero is doing. Really, sort of like brings her in, locks her in there. And here, I'm just sort of like, you know, okay, yeah, I can see why she likes him. But in, and then yeah. in episode three, yeah. I'm just like, he seems like, you know, I don't know. Like, I believe that they have children, but I don't know if I believe they did it. That's all. And this is Valentine's Day, so I'm glad we're watching this episode today. <laughs> As we do a Star Wars podcast on Valentine's Day, a Star Wars podcast with the four of us. Star Wars love story. <laughs> Yeah, Star Wars. This is Star Wars love stories. With well, I, I guess at the end of the day, it is a love story with the with the trilogy, right? You know, so all about is them two story? and like the heartbreaking tragedy. Is it a love story? I, don't, I don't know. I mean, when you really look at things, it it, it, it gets tragic in Revenge of the Sith, buddy. It gets yeah, very. They're tragic, only twenty seven. Right? I mean, Padme's only twenty seven in Revenge of the Sith. Anakin's only twenty two, twenty three. I mean, they're they're not like grown ups. They don't have their heads heads together. Like none of I wasn't yeah, smart but, enough at twenty three to be trying to run the galaxy. I'll tell you that much. But then you got the jealous thirty-five-year-old, you know, has, is in love with the, you know, the younger girl. So you see that. <laughs> I thought she liked <laughs> me that's... the most, Anakin. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's why I really, and we'll get into that. Anakin, you where, can't like just said, go. These, these you are, can't yeah. just go invade Ryloth yourself, Anakin. That's just yeah. That that is just a bad portrayal of Obi Wan. <laughs> that's where I know where, where Ken likes him. That's where he lost me. Like, oh, the acting. For, and and Ewan McGregor is a good actor. The way they he portrayed that character in the third, oh my gosh, we'll get into it. But geez, it, it's just bad. <laughs> it's bad. It makes him as weak as a character. I think you know. It's just that's where I lost it. Well, this but. is the this is the constant seesaw with Obi Wan, right? He's the second most. He's like what right. third or fourth most powerful Jedi in the universe. Can't do anything, right? Right. He looks like he's ninety years old and he's fifty. Right, he's in his fifties and he looks like he's ninety years old. And then you have to, you kind of realize, oh, this is all an act. And then you're like, am I really just retconning because Alec Guinness couldn't move around that? You know, like I mean, like he wasn't like a track, track and field athlete. He was an actor. You know what I mean, like that. Right. So that, that those, these are the questions I've always had about Obi Wan. Like where, like what's his power level? I almost want this stuff to be like Dragon Ball Z, where you can just tell me. You know what I mean? You gotta have the scout reader on yeah, here. Right? Uh, it's you know, over nine thousand. <laughs> <laughs> So Obi Wan, Obi Wan is like thirty five, and um, Anakin is like what twenty two. Yeah. You're I saying? Would say, I mean, yeah, he's probably a good twelve, thirteen uh, years old. I remember watching, uh, you know, the, a New Hope, and every time I do watch it, I mean, Obi Wan, I mean, you knew, you knew he was someone of stature and elegance um, and power, just just the way Sir Alec Guinness played the character, and. I still, I, I mean, it wasn't, they weren't able to do it real well in the movie, just based on his age, the age of the character right. at the time, the age of the actor. But the battle between, I mean, the fight between him and Vader was very, uh, a sta it, it, it made a statement to me because it right. did show that you don't have to be the young, the young buck. You have to be, you have to have experience and you have to have a lot of heart. And I think Obi-Wan Kenobi had those things. He had experience and he had heart. And he was always true to his mission. Whatever it was, he was true to it. And he knew that protecting Luke was his, that was it. Yoda gave him that mission and he completed it to the end. He protected him and he did whatever he needed to do to make sure Luke got off the Death Star. So for me... Obi Wan is the. I mean, he's he's one of the one of the big players, and you know, I, I see he's, he's kind of a he's kind of a wiener in Clone Wars. And there's, <laughs> I understand why Anakin's a little angry with him. Okay. He, people have to develop and mature, and so sometimes people don't become themselves until they get of age. You know, you know, get into that you know age category um, right. where they finally realize, okay, this is who I am. And, in, 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 you know, maybe that's what we see in, you know, A New Hope. And whereas what we're seeing right here is just like, you know, just just I, I wouldn't say whininess, you know, if, if, if T. Mitch is, is, is going on that route and stuff. I mean, I can I can stand him. Um, but I mean, it's it's I don't really need a lot of him on the screen. You know, I, right. I think it's more of an Anakin thing where I'm loving his I'm, I'm, I'm loving Anakin's character, you know, throughout, right. this, you know, yeah. Um and really just seeing him to, because really it is his story at the end of the day. Um, 
I'm loving the way that he's developing slowly. When we're watching these episodes, we're seeing the tidbits, like I was saying before, slowly of him, you know, going over to like the dark side. Little um, flashes with his anger. Here. Yeah, little mm-hmm. flashes of anger. He's still doing great stuff. He's still doing good stuff for the galaxy. You're seeing a goodness in him. So by the time we get to um um by the time we get to Revenge of the Sith and him turning to the dark side, we'll get that. It's sort of so it's, it's sort of supposed to tug at our hearts when the tragedy comes, you mm-hmm. know. So we're yeah. seeing like a tragic figure, you know, um, in development. Yeah, and me and Hitchside, you know, kind of alluded to this before. I don't have a problem with the animated Obi Wan. It's just like this is like tying into the points to where when we watch the movies, I just felt like his character. Like when you watch these series, as far as the Clone Wars we're at now. I can be like, okay, I understand his progression as a Jedi Knight. When I watch the movies, I'm like, oh, he wasn't ready at all. He's not ready at all to be a Jedi Knight. So that's kind of like, you know, like the seesaw that we're discussing. The animated series makes me wonder, like, okay, I can understand Obi-Wan. Okay, I, I see he's developing as Jedi Knight. He is one. When you watch the movies, especially before we got into this discussion, I'm like, oh, my gosh, he's a Jedi Knight? Let alone a Jedi Grandmaster at this point? You serious? <laughs> you know? It's, uh, it, it's interesting that you guys talk about the Anakin, you know, tragedy. It's, you know, as we tie it in later, it's, it, you know, it's rewritten again with Kylo Ren. It's a similar story, not mm-hmm. as aggressive, but it's a very similar story as far as the conflicting character developments. And as, you know, at the end, you know, as far as the, uh, you know, I guess, return to the light side or so. It, well, it's, well, well, just like in life, things repeat themselves in people. Right. So it's no surprise that Anakin is, I'm not Anakin, but um, Kylo Ren is on the same path as what right. Anakin was um, in, right. in this thing. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's fine to see because it happens in real life like that. Right. And it's a story about family, so it's a great generational, as we're saying, thing um, that Star Wars does, you know. And, and that's the, the great linear part about this is, you know, it's as we're talking about this now, it's 2020, you know, as we're talking about hits, when kids are older and stuff and they're looking at us like, a, you know, literally a bunch of nerds, <laughs> like, oh, wow, they're talking about this, you know, hopefully the stuff we're talking about will be a story that they can tell and. 10 to 15 years ago about, you know, things we alluded to that are coming out in the future. So it's, you know, it's never evolving. Well, well, think about cycle. it like this. This started in 1977. You know, people are still, and you got the younger ones, you know, into this, you know, hardcore. You got the older ones, you know, into this. Every, it's like, you know, this, this story here does pass generations. So when you're talking about the future, you know, with kids and stuff, it's not something that they're going to be looking at as, well, maybe they were going to be looking at it as old because of the, you know, gra- the CGI or whatever. But the story itself is timeless. Yeah. Right. You know, the lessons and everything. And think about this. It'll keep going until it finally catches up with itself. So it's going to be so popular and last so long that it won't be a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. It's actually going to be right now. <laughs> it, it's going to be like reality. It will actually now be. Hey, that that last episode was a little hitting on a little bit on reality, you know, with those capitals. More stuff. ways than mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. More ways than one, right? Crazy, yeah. Well, yeah, good, 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 good season. Um, can't wait to start watching, you know, next season, and um, you know, we'll um. We'll, we'll be back for I'm that. I'm excited to hear this is the appetizer oh and that it sort of gets better. And, you know, I noticed that. Yeah, that's the crazy yeah, thing, too. Right? I noticed that <laughs> the animation was better near the end of the season, like much better from the cart. The yeah. cart, the, the original right. movie was blocky and like stilty, but they seem yeah. a little more fluid now, more, you know, more things yeah. they're capable of doing. Yeah. 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 Like video games, everything improves as the technology goes. So things will, you know, it'll it'll look a lot better next next season. It does seem sure. very video gamey in that there's, you know, drop you in, like you know, this is the soldier, these Cut are the soldiers scene. you're leading, Cut go scenes. do the mission. Now you leave, and you're done. It starts over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then going into the next week, guys, uh, what do what do you guys want to do as far as episodes? Do you want to do uh, half the first uh, half of season two part and do a part one and part two. Is there a good is there a good, there a good spot from a story perspective for us to cut? Like, is there a, like a couple episode arc in like yeah. a, like six or seven or ten or somewhere like that that's like makes sense or? You want to divide them into like eight or something like that? Like, you can do it like that. Yeah, we can do you know three instead of four maybe. Okay, maybe I can break it up. Yeah, we'll do three. So, I mean, I know this was 11 or whatever, so it's 9 total or 10, so it was a little stretch. But, uh, yeah, for the next week, we'll give people a little bit of time to, to you know, I guess 
digest the content. So yeah, we'll go. Uh, we'll start with maybe like one to eight, unless there's a um, you know, like a two parter. Parter, right? Um, yeah. We'll um, and like I said, as DP alluded to, we'll we'll announce that on all our socials. So please, you know, if you guys are listening on podcast, you know, please leave a five star rating. You know, hopefully everybody who watches this on YouTube gives us a you know, a like and a subscribe, um, Facebook as well. You're giving us a thumbs up and, and even commenting on this, but, uh, yeah, we'll announce, like I said, on the socials and our Instagram as well. Um, kind of the full breakdown going into next week here, but, um, as far as the end of this episode, guys, you know, we kind of tied, I think everything up as far as what we wanted to get across our, uh, the plate as far as episode. And like I said, it's a good way to end season. Um, kind of interesting One cliffhangers. Word. One thing um, I do want to ask everyone, so me coming from a casual viewing perspective, I thought this was a good start. How are you guys feeling, especially you, Ken, and especially you, Hitch, um, with this first season being the, being that you guys never seen this before, coming from, you know, seeing the movies? How are you feeling about that? I I'm, I love it. I, I, I ignored it when it came out in 2008, <laughs> like almost completely. So I'm I'm disappointed in myself that I did that, but I I I like going back going back and watching these with a little more with with intent now. So yeah, I mean it's it's good it's good content. It's all new to me. So for me, it's interesting to see it like as a reference point for all the rest of the serial episodes because it all when we say the Star Wars, we mean wars, and this is the most worry ongoing thing it feels like there's a real momentum to this conflict it feels like there's real stakes in every battle and that's something i really wasn't expecting i, I thought maybe i'd enjoy some of the the anakin plot some of the mainline stuff but but to really get a lot of of uh of juice from the clones themselves and from you know the clone specific the war specific elements is something i really am surprised by I'm surprised by how they managed to make me care about every single one of these clone casualties. Like these guys are getting hit and I'm like, no, no, <laughs> you know, yeah. I have, and yeah. I, they're not one of the ones we follow. They're not one of the ones we, we talk about, but because they've done such a great job fleshing out the background story for enough of these clones, I believe they all have this rich interior life that's being cut short. So I, I feel like they've correctly built the stakes and correctly opened the door to show me exactly what's happened during the clone wars you, you don't have any uh you don't have any investment in the in the battle droid i mean, i am not no that's oh. the thing is it feels like and that's that's <laughs> roger, 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 roger 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 i mean they have personality too each 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 and every Even one Grievous of them is like I, I, was, I was a little surprised by the, the the battle droid's personality because every time they're talking and talking to each other and saying condescending things to one another. I mean, I think that's just a highlight for me. Yeah, they sound more like people than the clones do. I mean, we we, we talk to each other like the battle noise. Yeah, right. We, we were in the halls and, hey, Sam, how you doing? Yeah, get out of my way. You know, I mean, the clones are like the robots. And the robots are actually the, the people. Like, we have, yeah, we have yeah. to think about what this would mean for the rest of our lives and our existence. What are we? And the robots are just yeah. like, I... I push that thing over. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. Roger, roger. Good stuff. Good stuff, guys. So, yeah, you know, guys, once again, uh, like I said, we thank everybody for spending your couple, a uh, little bit of time on Valentine's Day with us. But um, definitely we'll be back again next week to uh, review the first part of season two of The Clone Wars. And, um, you know, go over. Hopefully, we'll have some interesting, uh, some news topics over the week here. Uh, like I said, I, I think Obi Wan starts uh, actually production this week, so they'll start filming that this week here. So hopefully, we'll get some tidbits or some things out uh, here in the future. And like I said, stay tuned to all our different, um, you know, layers of of multimedia access, whether it be here, whether it be Facebook, whether it be on our uh, Instagram page, um, and we'll definitely have more content for you as well. Uh, other than that, guys, uh, thank you again. And uh, until the next episode, this is the way. This is the way. Hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>